Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. So welcome back to our class. So for today's session, we're going to continue the last two subtopic of chapter 11, isometric transformation. Okay, previously you have learned uh, four subtopic, okay, regarding translation, reflection and rotation. So for today's session, we're going to look into translation, reflection and rotation as an isometry. Okay, so for the first um, learning standard for today, okay, is to investigate the relationship between the effect of translation, reflection and rotation and the distance between two points on an object and image and hence explain the isometry. Okay, so you have learned about uh, the transformation for translation, reflection and rotation for an object. Each one has certain properties. Okay, study the diagram on the left. Okay, are you able to recognize the transformation of image 1, image 2 in image 3? Okay, what is the relationship between the distance of the object and the image? Okay, of an object, if an object is mapped to a congruent image, then it is isometry. Okay, itu maksud isometry. If an object is mapped to a congruent image. Okay, so isometry is a transformation that maintains the distance between any two points on the original object. Okay, the isometric transformation will retain the original shape and size of the object. Okay, uh, so cuba kita tengok yang ini. Okay, so we have this object. Okay, and this line, okay, is axis of reflection. Okay, so we can see that. Okay, object. Okay, if it transform under a reflection. Okay, the image will be image 2. Okay. Uh, if rotation, uh, rotation biasanya kita akan buat macam ni eh. Uh, tengok 90 darjah. Sorry. Ini, ini 90 degrees kan. Uh, so, image 1 is rotation. Okay, image 1 rotation. Image 2 is reflection. And image 3 Okay, image 3 is translation. Okay. Uh, Biasanya translation dia sama lah. Dia hanya bergerak ke kiri, kanan, atas, bawah. Okay. So, let's look at the first example. Example 24. Which of these diagrams A, B and C are the isometric image of the object under an isometry? Uh, so, first kita kena tahu isometry tadi apa. Okay, isometry. Uh, transformation will retain the original shape. Okay, mesti ada original shape and size of the object. Okay. Okay, so uh, kita tengok object and A. Okay, A. We can see that the same shape and size. Okay, but the uh, orientation is different because the reflection again. Uh, okay, so we can say that A is isometric image okay uh, as it has the same shape and size okay next b okay b uh, kita tengok uh, shape okay sama tak shape uh, shape double bezel and this uh, sorry shape is uh, the same but the size is different so b is non isometric Okay, image. Okay, because okay, it is not of the same size. And same with C. C is more obvious, right? C is non-isometric image. Okay, boleh? Okay, so let's move to the next learning standard. Explain the relationship between isometry and congruency. Okay, look at the purple object. Purple, okay, can you state the image which is congruent under transformation of reflection? Okay, can you determine the axis of reflection for this isometric transformation? Okay, uh, so kalau ni macam mana? Okay, uh, ingat isometric, dia mesti same size and same shape. Okay, so kita boleh tengok inilah. Uh, this is image. So, this is object. 
this is image and the axis of uh, reflection is over here okay boleh okay look over here okay under an isometry object and images are of equal shape and size okay therefore object and images are congruent isometry is a transformation where the image is congruent with the object uh, ingat lagi tak congruent kan okay okay so let's look at example 25 object a b c and d are congruent Okay, congruent must be the same shape and same size. State the isometry of object A to object B. So, object A to object B. Okay. So, usually, okay, kalau uh, dia macam berubah, awak boleh tengok di sini. Eh? Okay, first kita cuba uh, connect the points. Okay. Okay, this point and its corresponding point is over here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is the midpoint. Okay, kita usually boleh fikir, uh, fikir macam ni lah. Okay, you have this corner. Okay, this quadrant. And then you move it over here. You rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so the object of A, okay, the image will be at B. So, you know this transformation is a rotation. Okay, so we know A is rotation. Okay, next, okay, A to C, A to C, you see? Okay, the same size and the same orientation, sama. Okay, dia cuma bergerak ke atas, ke bawah, ke kiri, ke kanan, kan? Okay, if this happen, so this is a translation. Okay, and finally, A and D, okay, you can see that it is of the same image, uh, sorry, of the same shape and size, but the orientation is uh, reflected, macam ni kan? Okay, uh, so this is a reflection. Okay. Okay, so let's move to the last learning standard for this subtopic, which is soft problem involving isometry and congruency. Okay, so let's look at this statement okay when naming a congruent polygon the order must be based on the vertex or the corresponding angle okay so for example we have a b c d okay this is the object so this is the image okay in order for you to name the image okay the order of the letter should be the same as the original okay so you start over here a b Okay, so you know that uh, image of A and B is SR. Okay, so you should start from SRQP. You cannot name it as QPSR okay, or RSPQ. Cannot. Okay, the order should be the same of the, uh, of the object and the image. Okay, so let's look at example 26. Okay, in the diagram ABCD. Okay, A, B, C, D is the image for P, Q, C, S. P, Q, C, S under an isometry. Given D, C, S, D, C, S is a straight line. Determine angle of P, Q, C. P, Q, C. Okay, so it means this angle. Okay. Okay. So, so if these two objects are isometry, okay, so we know that the triangle in the middle is uh, segitiga sama kaki. Okay, it should be a, a what type of uh, triangle? Okay, it should be an isosceles triangle. Okay, so if isosceles triangle happen, so we know that both angle on the bottom over here is the same size. Okay, so let's calculate the angle of angle CQB. Okay, wait. The size is quite big. Okay, angle CQB. 
B. Okay, so we know the total angle of triangle is 180 minus the top one 50 divided by 2. Okay, so 180 minus 50 divided by 2, we have 65. So over here is 65. Okay, so for angle PQC. Okay, PQC. Okay, so this is a straight line. Okay, so we know that angle of a straight line is 180. So 180 minus this angle is 65. 65. So the balance is 115. So we know the angle of PQC is 115. Okay. So you can read lah. Uh, this is the explanation based on understanding the problem, planning the strategy, implementing the strategy and conclusion. Okay. Okay, so I want you to try self-practice 11.5. Okay, number one and number two. Okay, now let's move to the last subtopic of this chapter. Okay, which is rotational symmetry. Okay, so the first learning standard is explain rotational symmetry. Okay, a shape has a rotational symmetry if the shape does not change after rotation even though it has less than one rotation. Okay. Okay, apa maksud uh, rotational symmetry ni? Okay, contoh dia. So, we have the original one A, B, C. Okay, so for example, ini saya pusing sekali. Okay, so A ni akan turun ke bawah, C ni akan naik ke atas, B ni akan pindah ke sini. Dia akan jadi macam ni kan? Ini naik atas, so C, A, B. Okay, this is a rotational symmetry. Contoh macam awak ada meja segitiga ni, awak pusing dia. Okay, so the symmetry is an exact match in term of size and shape of one part or the side of direction or object. Okay, for rotational symmetry, when the shape or image is rotated less than 360, at a fixed point, the shape will still look the same. Okay, for example, tadi uh, dia punya pusat tengah ni lah. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the example. Okay, identify the object, okay, which has rotational symmetry. Okay. So the first one we have a mass logo Malaysia Airlines. Okay, obviously if our rotate, okay tak kisah lah, rotate macam mana sekali pun awak tak akan dapat bentuk yang sama. Okay, ah kita tengok balik dia punya pengertian tadi. Okay, for rotation symmetry when the shape or image is rotated less than three six zero. Okay, mass less than three six zero. Okay, so for this object, okay, kita in order untuk dapat bentuk yang asal, kita kena rotate 360 kan. Uh, so, full 360 baru kita akan dapat bentuk yang sama. So, it is not a rotational symmetry. Okay, rotational symmetry, mesti awak pusing less, any angle less than 360 akan dapat bentuk yang sama. It is a rotational symmetry. Okay, so this one, okay, yes lah. Okay, obviously, kita boleh uh, imagine Awak rotate sikit, dia akan dapat Bentuk yang sama balik For example, ini kita pindah ke sini kan Pusing dia Okay And last one, obviously this one cannot lah Okay, so this is No Okay, boleh Boleh imagine Okay Okay, next learning standard Determine the order of rotational symmetry of an object Okay, so the number of image that can be generated in the same rotational center and becomes the original object is called the order of rotational symmetry. Okay, so tengok sini. Okay, the order of rotational symmetry is the number of time a shape moves to return to its original shape in a complete rotation. Okay, the number of axes of symmetry is equal to the number of order of a rotational symmetry. Okay, nampak tak? Okay, kita cuba uh, tengok QR code ni. So, kita ada contoh. Okay, this one. Okay. So, let's focus pada segi empat di square first. Okay. So, nampak angle ni? Angle ni 360 eh. 
So contoh saya kembalikan ke bentuk asal Okay So kita pusing gerakkan dia ha, Nampak tak? Dia bergerak kan? Ha, satu ha, Nampak tak daripada uh, perubahan dia tadi kan? From this part dia pergi ke sini Okay this one is One Two Okay. So yang sini dia pergi sini Satu, dua okay, Dia patah balik ke sini Sorry dia ke depan Tiga Empat uh, So dia ada empat lah okay, So order for square okay, Tengok di C eh. C ini dia akan ke sini okay, One Two Three ada uh, empat pusingan ok ok for triangle pula macam mana ok kita pusing ok ok so tengok yang atas ni G ni from this G ok satu dua Tiga ha, Sampai dia naik balik Ke tempat asal Okay, so ulang balik Okay, tengok balik yang G ni eh. This G Okay Okay, turun bawah Satu Dua Tiga Okay So we know that the order for a square is four The order of a triangle is three Okay Okay, so let's look at example 28. Okay, determine the order of rotational symmetry when a position of A changes to D in the diagram on the right. Okay, so sekarang cuba tengok sini. Eh. Okay, from A, okay, kita nak tukar ke sini kan? Okay, so cuba tengok sini. A, dia akan pergi ke B. B akan pergi ke C C akan pergi ke D Ok So that is D order Ok Determine the order kan So ni order dia A to B B to C C to D So kita ada 3 order So first order A to B Second order B to C Third order is C to D So dia akan end up macam ni lah Ok Boleh So itu adalah rotational Symmetry. Okay, so I want you to try self practice number one, number two, and number three. Udah saja. Okay, so uh, that's all for this two subtopic. Okay, short and simple. Okay, so um, I want you to uh, study. Okay, this uh, chapter. Okay, next week I'm going to give you PBD lah. Okay, in the first period. Okay, so uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. So if you have any problem, you can comment down below or just uh, ask in the uh, Telegram group. Okay, so thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.